All right. Hey, so I'm here to, um, as in this video here, oops, see, I, I put my phone on my, uh, I put my phone like in between the pencils and in the cup on my desk. But in this video, I want to talk about God's guidance. And my, my main goal here um, is by, by the spirit of God, by the grace of God, by the power of his spirit. Um, in this video, he's going to use me to relieve you from the pressure and relieve myself too relieve you from the pressure of trying to figure out like what direction to go in life or even how to like fix problems that um maybe have risen in your life that you don't know how to deal with you don't know how to trust god for um help in those areas of your life maybe you don't know how to pray about it um all the verses that we're going to talk about in this video it's going to answer those questions it's going to put those fears to rest and it's going to give you a strong sense of how loved you are and how much god's going to take care of it um and how much he's already taken care of it and how you don't have to do anything except believe that he's taking care of it and just rest in the fact that he's taking care of it. So I actually took notes notes this time. I didn't actually, it wasn't as spontaneous as I normally am with my videos, but maybe that'll make it easier for me to not have to post all the, uh, all the verses in the description. So uh, we're going to talk about some of the verses right now. So, um, and as I, as I mentioned these verses, I want, um, the main thing is um, to, um, I'm going to mention 1 Corinthians one twenty, which is all the promises of God are yes, and in him, in Jesus, they are amen to the glory of God through us. So God's glorified when you say yes to his promises because they're all available to you in Christ. It's not a maybe, it's not a perhaps, it's not a might happen, might not happen. If God's word says it, he's going to bless you with it. You receive it with an amen. It's so simple. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to be good enough for it. All you have to do is see a promise that you like and say yes, say amen to it. Yeah, God's ways are simple. And he, oh, boy, here we go. So I did not take notes on this verse, but it came to me. But um, this verse says, God uses the simple things of the world to confound the things which are mighty, the simple things. So the more simple-minded you are, probably the more easier it's going to gonna be to actually... Uh, uh, hear these verses. You don't have to think that it has to be some complicated um, form of like you have to work hard enough and all that stuff. But anyway, let's open the Word of God together, shall we? Anyway, um, so the first thing, because you know, in my life, I uh, there's been a lot of moments, especially recently, where even though I've listened to God's Word, it seems as if me talking talking about it is better, because then it's almost like I'm hearing it from myself, so that when I think thoughts, it's clear in my mind. Um, but lately there have been a lot of situations in my life where I'm looking back and I'm thinking, wow, I don't know if I made the right choice there. How do I make the right choice going forward? How do I know that God's guiding me? How do I believe that God's guiding me and to own that truth and to have that peace on the inside that God is guiding me? He's leading me in the right way. I don't have to worry about taking a wrong turn, etc., etc. So, um, yeah, so these verses answer that question for me. And, um, yeah, and again, by the grace of God, as you hear the word going forth, it's going to, just like the word of God says, and I didn't write this down, so I'll put whatever I don't mention in the video, whatever I don't mention in the video, I'll put in the description. Um, God's word says, um, oh yeah, 20% uh, battery. Hey, um, God's word says the word of God is living and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to even the division of soul and spirit of joints and marrow, joints and marrow, that's even your flesh. God's word can reach even a point in your very being, which I needed that reminder today because maybe you're feeling pains in some areas. God's word can actually reach even to the very joint and marrow in your body that is causing that pain and it can relieve you from it. So don't underestimate the power of God's word. People, um, it's easy. It's even easy for me to think that it's just a book, or sometimes maybe the words don't really have much of an effect on my body or my situation. But it's living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It divides what is spirit and soul, what's from you, the thoughts that are from you, and the thoughts that are from God, and it goes down to the deep cells of your body and repairs anything. Um, but yeah, so as far as um, guidance, God's guidance goes, and being successful goes since we all want good success. Um, Joshua 1.8 um, says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you'll meditate on it day and night, 
that you may observe to do according to all that's written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. That's Joshua 1.8. And it's always good to read that light in, uh, in light of the fact that we're not under law. Um, Romans 6.14 says you're not under law but under grace. So reading that verse in light of the new covenant that Jesus has bought for us, um, basically it's as, so, it's as simple as meditating on the word of God. Um, meditating on the word of God gives you good success. You don't have to focus on your problem to overcome it to get good success. Just meditate on the word. And as you meditate, you're going to be like the sheep in Psalm 23, um, being led into green pastures. Just chew on, chew on the grass of God's word and the shepherd will lead you down the paths. In fact, I wrote down Psalm 23, verse, oh, excuse me, Psalm 23, verse 3. He leads me. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. God's word will restore your soul. That part that you feel like is might not be alive anymore, the part that's joyful like a child, he will restore it, and he'll refresh you. He'll refresh all the areas of your mind that feel like maybe they're worn down by work, they're worn down by difficulty in your human interaction with people. He restores my soul. And the next part of that verse is, he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I don't lead myself. I don't have to put that pressure on myself. That's not my job. Not my job to lead me. The shepherd leads me. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not lack any good thing. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He leads you down the right path. You don't have to worry about going astray. He leads you down paths of righteousness for his name's sake. His name's on the line. It's important to him. He's going to lead you. It's important to him. And you're important to him. You are his sheep. He is your shepherd. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I didn't write that down in the notes, but he just reminded me of it. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I lay down my life for the sheep. I, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish, nor shall anyone snatch them from my hand. First thing I love about that verse is Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. He didn't say, because I used to always, I used to always like read devotionals and like how to hear God's voice and how to, like, how do I hear God's voice? How do I know if it's, I'm hearing God's voice? Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. It's a, it's a simple fact. It's not a, a matter of you need to learn how to hear God's voice. It's a given. You hear. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. They follow me. In another verse, he says, the voice of a stranger they, they shall not follow. So maybe you're experiencing that moments of where you're like, oh my gosh, do I know like if I'm following the God's voice or that's not God, God's voice? An easy way to know if it's God's voice is the one that you follow. It's so simple. In fact, it's the one that you follow without having to think about following. If you have to try to strive to follow a voice, perhaps that voice isn't God speaking, but maybe a, another voice that's pressuring you to do something or maybe imitating God. Um, Jesus said, my sheep, hear my voice. I know them, they follow me. They don't have to try to follow me. I'm the shepherd, they're my sheep, they follow me. So you don't have to worry about it. You're the sheep. You feed on the grass, shepherd leads you. It's a beautiful picture. And... Jesus said, I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, nor shall anyone snatch them from your, my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them from my Father's hand. You know what? That includes yourself. You cannot snatch yourself out of God's hand. Don't give yourself that much credit. <laughs> I, I once heard someone say that. You can, it's possible for um, yourself to like remove yourself from the will of God or to, like, to, to fall so far that you're out of God's hands. I'm sorry, like last I checked, I'm not that powerful. I'm a sheep. He's my shepherd. He's all powerful. He's holding on to me. Nothing can snatch me from his hand, not even myself. Anyway, um, so maybe you're um, continuing on with the notes. Maybe you're having uh, concerns in life. Maybe you're going through something. Um, I know I'm going through something right now where um, I just don't know how to fix it. Um, I've, I've, I've said things that I... Uh, did not intend to say, and my words have caused uh, emotional harm to some people that are really, really special to me, and I don't know how to fix it. And for many days, I was beside myself just figuring out, like, how do I make it right? These verses answer that question. Maybe you're going through a time, it doesn't even have to be like a, uh, a friendship issue or like a family issue or a, it doesn't have to be what I'm going through. It can be any situation because um, God's word says in Psalms 138, verse 8, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. It's almost like reminding God 
I'm remembering who you are. Don't for, don't forget what you're going to do for me. Don't forget the works of your hands. Everything God has given. Um, in fact, his word says, every good and perfect gift is from above. And God is more than willing to give you good gifts. If earthly fathers know how to give good gifts to their children, how much more will our Heavenly Father give good things to those who ask him? I didn't put that in my notes, but that just came to me. Um, so yeah, ask and it will be given to you. Jesus does not put conditions on what you ask for. I mean, the only condition he says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. He didn't say you'll ask what you need and it'll be done for you. That's, I mean, obviously that's a given. My God shall supply all, all my need. I love how he says, you will ask, if my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it will be done for you. You'll ask what you'll get what you want. You know, forget all the lies that say God doesn't give you what you want. God's word says, I didn't write this down either. <laughs> God's word says, delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires, plural, of your heart. The deep desires of your heart that you are yearning for. Maybe you're yearning for love and acceptance. Maybe you're yearning for um, to feel like you're worth something. And maybe you just, you're not dissatisfied, you're not satisfied with life. Um, he gives you the desires of your heart. He gives you. You don't have to earn it. It's a free gift. Um, in fact, there's a verse that says, if it's by grace, it's no longer of works. Otherwise, grace is no longer grace. Grace isn't grace if you work for it. So, and there's another verse, didn't write that down either, but there's a verse that says, he satisfies the longing soul and he fills the hungry soul with goodness. I don't know about you, but that's a tall order for me. He satisfies the longing soul. My soul is longing for a lot, of, a lot in this world. Um, so the fact that he satisfies the longing soul, I'm like, bet. Um, God's word says God cannot lie. So your promises are true. And all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ. Like, bet. I receive that in Jesus' name. He satisfies the longing soul. So I'm ready to be satisfied. And I receive that. So um, the Lord will perfect whatever concerns you. And since the Lord will perfect whatever concerns you, there's nothing for you to be concerned about. Anyway, um, I'm also going to read from Second Chronicles uh, 20, chapter 20. Um, Jehoshaphat was about to go to battle, and God said, uh, Thus says the Lord to you, Do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. So remember, all the promises of God are, are yes and amen in Christ. So maybe there's a great multitude, there's a huge battle that you're in in this life, perhaps. Don't be afraid or dismayed. The battle's not yours. It's not yours to fight. It's not your job to figure out how to solve your life problems. The battle's not yours, but God's. Maybe you think you need to fight, or like you need to fight, you need to fight the good fight of faith, which there's, I think there's a verse for that, but um, we're, we're focusing on rest here so that you can let go of all those thoughts that are pressuring you, making it feel like all the pressure's on you to figure out your problems and solve them. Um, Second Chronicles, also reading from Second Chronicles, verse 17, says you will not need to fight in this battle. And remember, we're seeing the character of God. God is speaking to people who are about to go to a battle a hard point in their life, God is saying, you will not need to fight in this battle. I'm reading, position yourselves, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, who is with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Don't fear or be dismayed. Um, tomorrow go out and go against them, for the Lord is with you. That's all you need to know. God is with you. No, in fact, there's a verse that says, if God is for us, who can be against us? It doesn't matter what you're going through. Perhaps, like, who can be against us? Jesus' name is above every name. His name is above all disease. His name is above depression. His name is above every trouble, every strife of life. His name is above discouragement. Yeah. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. I'm quoting a different part of scripture. Every knee shall bow. In fact, every knee shall bow. Everything shall bow at the name of Jesus. Maybe you, or whatever you're going through, um, say Jesus' name and you'll find that your problems will have to bow. But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Um, Exodus 14, 14, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Other translations say the Lord will fight for you. All you need to do is to be still. It's that same, uh, oh yeah, it's the same kind of concept of uh, Psalms 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations and I will be exalted in the earth. You know, I used to really get really caught up with Pre the pressure, pressuring thoughts of like, I need to glorify God's name. I need to glorify God. Whenever I'd walk away from a conversation and maybe I, I didn't tell people to go. It's kind of it sounds silly me saying this now, but it was a real struggle I had when I was young in the faith, full of zeal, but still growing in wisdom. Um, I used to be really dis distraught when I didn't talk about God enough, which is 
not from God. Thoughts like that are condemning, they're not from God. Thoughts that are about your performance, trying to measure you up, not from God. Um, but I would feel discouraged. And then I found this verse that said, be still, know that I'm God. I will be exalted in all the earth. It's not, the pressure's not on you to glorify God. In fact, Jesus said, I have glorified your name on the earth to the Father, God the Father. He said, I have glorified your name on the earth. I didn't write that down in my notes, but um, I'll put it in the description. He said, I have glorified your name on the earth. And remember, God, God spoke to Jesus saying, I will both glorify my name and I will glorify it again. So, you know, even God's glory, it's like the, the things which are burnt um, on the day of judgment, whatever is gold and whatever is wood. Anything that's wood is something that you did, a man's effort. Wood speaks of humanity. God, uh, gold actually speaks of divine righteousness in the Bible. That's what it represents. So everything that God does will remain Everything that you do of your own efforts is not going to last, which is encouraging to someone who puts a lot of pressure, who put a lot of pressure on himself on the early years of my salvation. Like, oh, wow, I don't actually have to strive to glorify God because God's going to glorify himself in me. And uh, in fact, there's a verse that says, whatever God does is forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing can be taken away from it. There's another verse that says, um, unless, the, uh, unless the Lord builds the house, those who labor in vain. Anyway, we're going to go ahead with the uh, with the notes that I took. Yeah, uh, let's go to the story when Jesus, uh, when Peter walked on the on the water with Jesus. And I love it. Um, we're going to read from Matthew uh, Matthew 14, verses 25 through 32. Now, um, very familiar with the story. Very, very popular story. Disciples saw, saw Jesus walking on, on the water. They thought he was a ghost. They were freaking out. I'd be freaking out too. <laughs> Can you imagine like them kind of screaming like, ah, I, I just, I think it's funny. Like imagining stories like that. Um, Jesus being all super cool. Like how cool is that? Like he's walking on the water as if it's the most normal thing in the world. And he's like, be of good cheer. It's me. Don't be afraid. <laughs> he's super chill. I love it. Um, and Peter answered and said, Lord, if it's you, command me to come out to you on the water. So Jesus said, come. Um, you know, I've heard it preached so many times where um, people, uh, I don't know, I've heard it preached in a sense of almost like putting the pressure back on you, like you need to go on the water to where Jesus is. Jesus is commanding you to come. You need to listen. But I don't know if you noticed, Peter asked first. And I used to view this verse as something I needed to do. But now I see it as Jesus literally let Peter walk on water. Peter's like, hey, whoa, you're walking on the water. If it's you, Make me walk on the water too. Jesus gave him something that he wanted. Peter wanted to do something impossible, something cool. So Jesus said, sure, come. <laughs> I love it. So that story tells me, and I'm not the first person who preached this, that story tells me that Jesus never limits you. And I'm not, I'm not quoting myself. Like I said, I'm not the first person to preach this. Jesus never limits you from believing him believing in him for big things in your life. Maybe your situation seems impossible. Maybe the thing that you want is impossible. Jesus is not going to put limits on, on you, like saying, whoa, you can't ask that. You're not allowed to ask that. You know, think about it. That miracle, there was no, all Jesus' miracles, like the main, the main nature of Jesus' miracles was to save, to heal, and deliver. But here they are just walking on water. It's almost like Jesus, just, this, this is a free, this is a free one. Like, I'm just going to give you something cool, just so you can know that I'm not just in the business of saving lives. I'm not just in the business of making miracles happen and healing bodies. I'm in the business of allowing you to do amazing things in this life, enabling you to do things that you only dream of. So never limit yourself when it comes to God. In fact, there's a verse that says, I didn't write this down, but um, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly and above all that we can ask or think, to him be the glory forever and ever. I'm, I'll post that in the description too. But, so, to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above all that we ask or think, that means we can ask big things from God. And, uh, oh, there's another thing. Ooh, I just remembered something else. Let's see if I can, uh, what was it? To him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Oh, yeah. You know that, that verse that says, God is able to make all grace abound toward you so that you, being sufficient in all things, might have an abundance for every good work. You know, in the, in the Greek, the word is able. The actual, uh, the actual verb usage of the word, I'm not, I'm not the first person who shared this, 
Um, I heard this from a preacher, and it set me free from wondering whether or not God's actually going to do anything about my situation. Um, um, it says, God is constantly making all grace abound to you, all favor abound to you, so that you, being sufficient in all things, have an abundance for every good work. Anyway, but yeah. Oh, and then obviously Jesus, uh, when Peter was walking on the water with Jesus, Peter took his eyes off of Jesus. He got distracted by the storm. He began to sink. And immediately, I'm reading from the scripture, immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him. He didn't wait for him to sink a little bit and take in some of the water before he drowned. Like, I, I don't know. I, I, I watched like a, oh, well, I watched like a, sh there was like a show where um, it depicted that scene with Jesus and like, Peter was like underwater for a good 10 seconds. I'm just like, whoa, <laughs> I feel like Jesus actually would have saved him sooner because I don't think Jesus lets people drown. The word, the word of God says immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him. You know, something beautiful. I, and God showed this to me, even in the first year of my salvation, when I first came to know him, whether or not, whether Peter was above the water or sinking, or no, no, rather, whether, whether Peter was walking on the water or sinking in the water, Jesus didn't let him go under. So it, it doesn't matter what you're going through. Maybe you're you're walking on on sun. Ow! Oh, I hit my hand on my desk. Maybe you're walking on sunshine, or maybe you hit your hand on your desk and you're having a bad day. I'm kidding. <laughs> maybe whether you're walking on sunshine or maybe you're having a rough day, Jesus will not let you go under. Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him, and said to him, "Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt?" And you know, I'm I'm no stranger to doubt. I know it's super hard. It can be really hard to just kind of hold on to God's word on days where you don't really feel the best. Um, but yeah, he will always keep you above the water. He's not going to let you drown. Yeah, you can believe him for big things. It's not your willingness to come on the water. It's his willingness to let you walk on the water. So, oh, and may, um, may this verse, this following verse, may it answer your questions on where to go in your life. Maybe you're seeking guidance in your life for a job maybe you're seeking guidance in life for how to make things right with a loved one um maybe you're uh, seeking how to um where to go you don't know where you're meant to spend most of your time or who to spend most of your time with and maybe you don't know um you don't know how to guide yourself guide yourself like it's your responsibility but um god's word says psalm 32 verse 8 i will instruct and teach you in the way you should go i will guide you with my eye and this is an um, extra that just came to me um jesus said when the holy spirit comes he will teach you all things and he will bring to your remembrance all things that i've taught you so if there's a word of god that encourages you the holy spirit will bring to your remembrance in fact that's i've had people tell me like how do you remember scripture so much like either drop uh, just just like that like it's not me it is the spirit of god the holy spirit brings to my remembrance all things that jesus has taught me and all you have to do is feed on the word. The Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance in your time of need. So, yeah. Oh, and he will teach you all things. All things is all things. It's not limited to all things from scripture. The Holy Spirit will teach you all things. The Holy Spirit will teach you how to be a good friend. The Holy Spirit will teach you how to receive uh, correction. The Holy Spirit will teach you wisdom. And this is also extra. If you, if you need wisdom in your life, um, there's a verse in James that says, if anyone lacks wisdom, 10% battery, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God and he, who gives. Sorry, I got distracted by my hand motions. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all freely and without reproach. The word freely and without reproach is um, in the Greek. It, it basically means um, who is constantly giving to all freely and without fault finding. God does not find fault in you asking wisdom for him. God's not going to say, oh, you need to go fix that in your life before you ask wisdom from me. He gives to all liberally and without reproach, without fault finding. Ask for wisdom and it will be given him. And then the verse continues, says, but let him ask in faith without doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave tossed to and fro upon the sea. He's a double-minded man and unstable in all his ways. For let not that man think he'll receive anything from the Lord. You used to get really discouraged about that, that part of the verse. I'm like, oh no, like when I ask, sometimes I doubt. But, um... That verse, that part of the verse, the doubting part, don't focus on the negative. That's not the part. You Don't let the fear of doubting take away from you asking God for wisdom in your life, for help in your life. Because, you know, the whole basis of him giving to you wisdom, it says, let him ask of God and it will be given to him. 
So, you know, the whole doubting, the whole doubting whether or not God will give you wisdom, that comes from not believing the first part of that verse, that if you ask God for wisdom, he will give it to you. Maybe you need wisdom in your life, whether it comes to um, guidance, where to go, how to, how to interact with people, or uh, who to talk to about a matter, who to open up to, everything, everything. There's so many things you could ask for wisdom for. And Solomon um, was recorded to be the wisest man in the Bible. And he actually received riches and honor from God, all because he asked um, God for wisdom. In fact, God gave him more blessings from a for asking for wisdom. And this verse says wisdom is a principal thing. But anyway, I think I've talked about all the verses. Um, yeah, God says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. He will guide you. You don't have to guide yourself. It's all on him. The pressure's on God. It's not on you. So I pray that you might rest in that today. And this entire, maybe this, yeah, this week too. I don't know. I said that in the last video, <laughs> week-wise. I don't know. It helps me. Yeah. I'm also going to feed on, this, uh, on these truths myself. Um, <laughs> yeah. In fact, uh, I think Psalm 1 says, it's the same concept, Psalm chapter 1. It says, meditating on the word of God, you'll be like a tree planted by rivers of, of water. Um, the word meditate is to mutter. All you have to do is mutter as you go throughout the day. You're like, you'll be like the sheep chewing on grass as you're guided through the green pastures. So I hope you enjoy this week as you're um, guided by the Good Shepherd, who no one can snatch you out of the hands of. And uh, yeah, don't worry about your problems. God's going to sort them all out. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Everything that's crooked, he's going to make straight. Everything that is a mess he's going to clean up. Everything that seems wrong, he's going to make right. So, yeah. I'm going to go to bed. It's past 11. Peace.